Hi, and welcome to Village Pause. My name is Stuart, your host, and we have a new series entitled Positive Tips. On today's episode, we're going to focus on at-home brushing for double-coated and long-haired dogs. To get everything started, we're going to turn everything over to Laura, our certified groomer and the owner of Village Paws. Hi, my name is Laura. I am the certified groomer here at Village Paws, and today I'm going to talk to you guys about how to brush a double-coated breed. So a double-coated breed is your Goldens, your Bernese Mountain Dogs, your Newfoundlands, um, your Australian Shepherds, all those guys. And the best tool to use on double-coated dogs is, of course, the slicker brush, which is this brush right here, and it comes in different styles and sizes. So whatever size fits best in your hand, but you're looking for a soft slicker. So you don't want the harsh ones, you want the soft slicker. And of course, if I can pick it up, a good comb. And I will talk briefly about the Furminator. A lot of people ask questions about it, um, but I'm going to start with the slicker brush. So for the slicker brush, you're going to, the trick with this brush is a lot of people are very insecure about using it because of the pins. It is a brush that is meant to be used very gently. It's not meant to get right down to the skin. So you're going to use it very softly, lifting up the dog, the dog's hair and brushing from the undercoat down to the top coat. So the undercoat is what's shedding. That's what the brush is sort of going to help loosen up. It's just like a fluff brush, kind of brushes the surface. After you're done brushing with your slicker brush, you're going to move to your comb. I really like a nice metal comb with the two different lengths. Uh, this is considered a medium tooth comb and this is your fine tooth comb. Um, they run about seven bucks. They're great. And using your medium tooth side first, you're just going to brush right down to the skin. And then in areas that are a bit more sensitive, such as around the paws, you can switch to your finer tooth comb. Or you can switch and do the ears. And you're going to brush there. If you find you're getting a lot of static, being wintertime and everything, you can uh, use a spray. <laughs> just spray it a little bit. And then go back to your brushing. You want to keep your brushing sessions short and stress-free. The best time that I like to brush my dog is when I'm watching TV and on, during commercials. So I have no excuse not to brush my dog because I'm not really doing anything anyway <laughs> besides watching television. So it's a great way to bond with your dog, relax with them, and keep your brushing sessions nice and relaxed. So you can see somebody is shedding. The next brush I will talk about is, of course, the infamous Furminator. This brush is a shedding rake. It is designed to pull the undercoat through the top coat. Because of this, it can damage the coat if you overbrush. So you want to make sure that if you're using a Furminator, you ask your professional groomer how to use it prior to using it on your own dog. Sessions with the Furminator should be very brief, maybe five minutes, constantly moving, and you never want to brush areas that are sensitive like ears, paws, uh, the bum, back of legs, or tail. It really is meant to be used on the bulk of the dog or the torso, and a very light movement. I'm not putting any pressure on the brush at all. I don't have to. It's designed to capture that fine, fuzzy hair that's all over your couch. So if you're going to use the Furminator, which is a great tool on these guys, ask your professional how to do it prior to doing it yourself at home. Yes. Uh, the next thing I'll quickly talk about is, uh, of course, how to keep your dog positive during the grooming session. Patience is everything when it comes to working with animals. Give yourself time. Don't try to brush your dog if you have a meeting in 10 minutes. You're gonna to brush too hard, you're gonna to brush too aggressively, trying to get it done, and your dog's gonna hate it. They're gonna start biting at the brush because it hurts or it's stressful. Um, as you can see, Shandy loves being touched and brushed. So what I like to do is after I'm done giving her a brush and she sits there nice and calm, I'm gonna reward her with a treat. And that's pretty much it. 
that's how you brush your double coated dog. So the next breed of dog or coat type that we're going to talk about is we're going to talk about natural haired, long haired dogs. So these are your Shih Tzus, your Lassas, your Yorkshire Terriers, your Maltese, anything that's a hair type coat um, and grows pretty much to the floor. Um, this is a Lassa Apso cross and uh, the best brush is actually a comb. So I like to always, always, always stress the comb is the most important for this type of coat type. You can start with your slicker, which I talked about with the double coated dogs, and you can use it to just kind of loosen it up, loosen the hair, hair fibers from sticking to each other. But what's really going to determine whether or not your dog is combed is of course your comb. If your comb glides through the dog's hair, you know you've gotten right down to the skin. If it's tugging, if it's resisting, you have a knot. <laughs> you, have a, you have some resistance happening there. So you can pick up your slicker again, give it a few more little brushes lightly. Again, the slicker is not meant to be used right to the skin. Your comb is, and go back and use your comb. Uh, again, with these little guys, because they're small, it's great to put them on your lap but make sure that it's grooming time. If your dog is too used to being on your lap and he thinks it's fun time or snuggle time, you can use a small towel dedicated only to grooming. So this becomes the dog's grooming towel. You can place it on the floor in front of you or on your lap if your dog is more comfortable. You can ask them to stand on it and say, okay, we're gonna groom now. I'm gonna brush you. And you're gonna brush for a few minutes. Again, you can use an anti-static spray. Um, BioGroom makes a good one, um, but you can use water. The trick with these products, don't use things like these detangling sprays or anti-mat sprays. They leave a film on the dog's coat, which just attracts dirt, which actually makes your job harder because now the dog is dirty and it's attracting dirt. So you can just give it a little spray, a light mist, and then go back to your brushing. You can also spray it on your brush or on your comb. Areas you want to pay attention to on these dogs are of course tails, ears, beards, legs, and of course the belly. Um, and I just want to make a quick mention because a lot of people bathe their little dogs at home, which is great. You want to use a high quality dog shampoo, not human shampoo. You want to bathe your dog, you want to Bathe your dog about once a month and you want to make sure that you comb and brush them out completely before you wash them. After you wash them, comb and brush them again. It's just like our hair and this hair uh, can tangle very, very easily. And of course, once your dog has finished grooming, you're going to reward them with a treat. Turn this way. There you go. <laughs> and that's pretty much all there is to it. You can ask your professional groomer to help you get started picking out the right tools and even get them on a good grooming regime so that you can help keep your dog mat free uh, in between professional haircuts. All right, so that's pretty much everything, guys. I hope you had a good time, and uh, we'll see you next time. Say bye, Pro. Say bye. Well, that's it for this episode of Positive Tips. Thank you for watching. Until next time, remember, take your best friend for a walk. It'll do you both good.